Introduction On this mission we will practice the cold start procedure for the F-16C Block 50. The procedure is based on the manual of the real aircraft, and its general sequence will be Interior inspection Before starting the engine Starting the engine After starting the engine Press, spacebar, to begin Interior inspection First, if the cockpit interior is too dark, activate the flashlight with left alt plus L Press, spacebar, to continue On the left console, set the switch manual TF fly up, to enable This setting, allows the FCS to do an automatic fly up emergency maneuver when in manual terrain following mode, if the aircraft gets too close to the ground Set the knob by FF master, to the standby position Set the communications and IFF knob, to the backup position Set the master lights knob, to the norm position On the UHF radio backup control panel, set the function selector to both Set the switch stores config, as required, CAT1 for light load, CAT3 for heavy load CAT3, limits pitch to a maximum AOA of 16 to 18 degrees, depending on gross weight and maximum roll rate is reduced by approximately 40% of CAT1 authority. Press, adjust the analog altimeter, to the current QFE of 29.92 inches of mercury. Press, spacebar, to continue. Before starting the engine. 1. Set main power switch to battery position. Prior to engine start, the main power switch is placed to battery to permit a check of the aircraft battery. The Alexis, main gen. Standby Gen, and FLCS, RLY, lights come on. The FLCS, RLY, light illuminates because the four FLCS relays are open and the FLCC is not connected to the aircraft battery. The FLCS, PMG, light is not illuminated since it requires FLCS power. The TO, FLCS, light does not illuminate since the FLCS relays are open. Press, spacebar. To continue, we will now request armament to the ground crew, and take note of the aircraft total weight, as we will use it later to determine the correct rotation and takeoff speeds. To contact the ground crew, on the HOTAS press either VHF or UHF, PTT buttons, or use the backslash key. The communications menu will appear, select F8, ground crew. Now click on F1. Rearm and refuel. On the rearm window, take note of the total weight. Once the rearming has completed, press, spacebar, to continue. 4. Advance switch main power to main PWR position, to prepare for engine start. This connects external power, if available, or the main generator to the electrical system and enables the standby generator. Check that the following alarms illuminate. Engine. Hide slash oil press. Alexis. SEC. On the elect panel. The lights FLCS, RLY, FLCS, PMG and STBY, Gen, are lit. Press, 5. Light CPU Gen and EPU, PMG, check that they are on lit, on the elect panel. The EPU is a self-contained system which simultaneously provides emergency hydraulic pressure to system A and emergency electrical power. The EPU automatically activates when both main and standby generators fail or when both hydraulic system pressures fall below 1000 PSI. Press, spacebar, 6. We will now contact the ATC, air traffic controller, and request permission to start the engine, using the UHF radio. We already powered up the UHF radio on a previous step, but we still need to tune it to the ATC frequency. We are currently at my cop where the ATC frequency is 254 MHz, but instead of tuning the frequency manually, we will make use of the preset 5 of this radio, which is set already to 254 MHz. Set the mode knob to preset. Select preset 5. Right click for next preset, left click for previous one. Good, now click the UHF, PTT on the HOTAS, or use the keys right alt plus back click F1 to select the MyCop airbase. Finally, click F3 to request startup permission. Kunskaya, in field, one, one. Once request you receive startup. the answer from ATC, press F12 to close the communication F3 menu. One, one. Press, spacebar, to continue. Three, two, two, five, at six meters per second. 
7. Canopy. As desired. We will close it now, to show how it is done. To close the canopy, left click and hold the highlighted switch. A right click would open the canopy. Press, spacebar, once you have the canopy fully down. Now, lock the canopy by clicking on the yellow handle. The 8. Ask the ground crew to place wheel chocks. They are needed because the switch and skid. Parking brake will automatically move to anti skid when the throttle goes beyond idle. To contact the ground crew, on the HOTAS press either VHF or UHF PTT buttons, or use the backslash key. Copy. The communications menu Red will appear. Now I'll click on F4, wheel chocks. Next, click on F1, place wheel chocks. Press, starting the engine. 1. The jet fuel starter, JFS is a small gas turbine which operates on aircraft fuel and drives the engine through the ADG accessory drive gearbox. The JFS is used to start the engine on the ground and to assist in the event of an engine air start. Start 1 and Start 2 positions are very similar, with Start 1 using just one brake accumulator to start the JFS, while Start 2 uses two accumulators. The green JFS run light illuminates within 30 seconds after initiating the JFS start, to indicate that the JFS has reached its operating speed. Start the JFS by placing the JFS switch to the start to position, with a left click. 2. Throttle, advance to idle after reaching 20% RPM minimum, by pressing right shift plus home. During the engine start, monitor the following. 3. SEC caution light, off. The SEC caution light, located on the caution light panel, indicates if the engine is operating in SEC, secondary engine control, mode. 4. Engine warning light, off at approximately 60% RPM. The engine warning light, located on the edge of the right glare shield, illuminates when RPM and FTIT indicator signals indicate that an engine over temperature or flame out has occurred. The warning light 5. JFS switch, confirm off. If the JFS switch does not automatically return to off, turn JFS to off position manually. Notify maintenance after flight. 6. Check that the hide oil press warning light is off. The hide oil press warning light, located on the edge of the right glare shield, serves as a monitor of both engine oil pressure and hydraulic system pressure. For engine oil pressure, the warning light illuminates when oil pressure has been below 10 pounds per square inch for 30 seconds, this time delay minimizes the chance of illuminating during hard maneuvering. The light goes out when oil pressure exceeds 20 pounds per square inch. For hydraulic pressure, the warning light illuminates when either A or B system pressure decreases below 1,000 pounds per square inch. The light goes out when both system A and B pressures are above 1,000 pounds per square inch. During engine start, the warning light usually goes off before reaching idle RPM. However, acceptable operation is indicated if the warning light goes off before exceeding 70% RPM and remains off when the throttle is retarded to idle. Press, spacebar, 7. Check that the fuel flow is 700 to 1,700 pounds per hour. The fuel flow indicator is a digital indicator which displays the total fuel flow to the engine, including afterburner, in pounds per hour. The indicator has a range of 0 to 80,000 pph. 8. Check oil pressure. It should be 15 psi minimum. The oil pressure indicator displays engine oil pressure from 0 to 100 psi. 9. Check jet nozzle position should be over 94%. The nose pos indicator is a direct display of actual nozzle position, ranging from 0%, closed, to 100%, full open, 10. Check the RPM, should be between 62 and 80%. The RPM indicator has a pointer display expressed in percent RPM from 0 to 110%. The RPM signal is supplied by the engine alternator. Press, space, 11. Check the FTIT should be 650 degrees or lower. The FTIT indicator displays exhaust gas temperature, EGT, in degrees Celsius. The indicator has a range of 200 to 1200 degrees, in major increments of 100. Pr 12. Check the hydraulic pressure indicators, one for system A and one for system B, located on the right auxiliary console, they should indicate 2850 to 3250 psi. Both hydraulic systems operate simultaneously to supply hydraulic power for the primary flight controls and leading edge flaps. 
If one of the systems should fail, the remaining system provides sufficient hydraulic pressure, however, the maximum actuation rate of the FLCS is reduced. System also supplies power to the FFP and the speed brakes. All remaining utility functions, consisting of the gun and gun purge door, air refueling system, landing gear, brakes, and nose wheel steering, are supplied by System B. System B also charges the brake slash JFS accumulators, which provide start power for the JFS, after engine start. 1. On the test panel, check. A. Set probe heat switch, to probe heat, with a right click. On the warnings panel, the probe heat caution light should be off. B. Next, press and hold the probe heat switch on the test position, with a holding left click. The probe heat caution light should be flashing. C. Leave the probe heat switch on the off position. Press, space bar, to continue. D. Press and hold the fire and O heat detect button. The alarm ENG fire and the warning overheat should illuminate. Press, space bar, to continue. F. Press and hold the MAL and IND, LTS button. This button, operates relays which test the illumination of all warning, caution, and indicator lights, the LG warning horn, and voice messages. All alarms and alerts of the cockpit should illuminate, and the audio alerts should be heard. Press, space bar, to continue. 3. On the avionics power panel, enable electric power to the following systems. A. Switch MMC, B. Switch ST, STA, store station, to the ST, ST of position, C. Switch MFD, multifunction displays, to the MFD position, D. Switch UFC, up front control, to the UFC position, E. Switch GPS, global positioning system, to the GPS position, F. Switch DL, data link, to the DL position, 4. INS alignment. The INS is the main source of navigation information. Should the INS fail, all navigation capability except TACAN is lost. The INS consists of the ring laser gyro, RLG, and an inertial navigation unit, INU. The RLG, INU can be aligned by two methods on the ground. The first method is the normal, or gyro compass, GC, alignment which requires 8 minutes to accomplish. The second alignment method is a 90 second stored heading, SH, alignment for quick reaction. On this method, the ground crew performs a normal GC alignment and then powers off the aircraft. If the aircraft is not moved, then on the next cold start the pilot can make use of SH alignment, taking advantage of on DCS, the aircraft is always able to do a SH alignment, as it is assumed that the ground crew performed a GC alignment before the pilot enters the aircraft. Be sure to have requested the armament, before starting the alignment, or the alignment will have to be redone. Press, space bar, to continue. 4.1. INS Function Knob. Set to Store Heading. Start the INS alignment by moving the EGI, INS knob to the Store Heading position. On the DED display, the INS page is automatically displayed. 4.2. DED Verify Correct Data, Latitude, Longitude and True Heading. The INS present position, must not be entered but can be verified to confirm correct data. Status 90, status 79, heading ready, degraded nav ready, audio flag retracts, steady ready, align. Status 60, circular error probability 6 times higher than normal. Status 50, circular error probability 5 times higher than normal. Status 40, circular error probability 4 times higher than normal. Status 30. Circular error probability 3 times higher than normal. Status 20, circular error probability 2 times higher than normal. 
Status 10, full performance alignment. Flashing ready on DED. Flashing align on the HUD. Alignment is finished. Normally, you can continue with the cold start procedure while the INS aligns, but this time we have instead monitored the align process. 5. Sensor power panel. The sensor power control panel, located on the right console, contains power switches for the aircraft sensors. A. Left chin hard point. This hard point can mount the navigation pod NVP. This switch would provide electric power to it. We don't mount this type of pod today, so leave this switch off. B. Right chin hard point. This hard point can mount the targeting pod TGP. We do have a TGP pod mounted today, so turn this switch to the HDPT position. C. This switch gives power to the fire control radar, FCR, so turn it to the FCR position. D. This last switch gives power to the radar altimeter. Set it to RDR, ALT, take note that it is a three position switch. 6. HUD adjust. The HUD is a combined electronic optical device that provides flight symbols relating to attack, navigation, weapon, aiming, and landing modes. The HUD remote control panel provides control of the HUD set. Together, the remote and the integrated control panel control the symbology displayed. A. Activate the HUD by turning its brightness wheel on the ICP. B. The scale switch control selection of the various HUD scales. The WVAH position selects vertical velocity scale, velocity scale, altitude scale, and heading scale. The VAH position selects all the scales listed above except the vertical velocity scale. The off position removes all scales except the digital readout windows. Set as desired and press spacebar to continue. C. The flight path marker switch controls flight path marker symbology as a function of the selected master mode and sub mode. The ATT FPM position selects simultaneous display of the attitude reference bars and the flight path marker symbol. The FPM position selects only the flight path marker. The off position removes both the attitude reference bars and the flight path marker. D. The DED data switch controls the display of the five rows of DED or PFLD, pilot fault list display, data on the low sector of the HUD. Set as desired and press, space bar, to continue. E. The DEPR, RET switch, controls selection of the primary and standby reticles. The STBY position selects the standby reticle and removes all other symbology. The PRI position selects the primary reticle and does not remove other symbology. The off position removes both reticles. Set as desired and press F. The velocity switch controls the selection of the following velocity scales. CAS, calibrated airspeed scale. TAS, true airspeed scale. GND, SPD, ground speed scale. With landing gear handle down or in dogfight mode, CAS will be displayed on the HUD regardless of velocity switch position. Set as desired and press space bar G. The ALT switch controls selection of the following altitude scales. Radar, radar altitude scale, a GL. Borrow, barometric altitude scale, MSL. Auto, automatic radar altitude slash barometric altitude scale. Set as desired and press space bar to continue. H. The brightness control switch controls selection of day ranges from off to full intensity. Night ranges from off to half intensity. Auto BRT automatically maintains a symbol to background ratio contrast during varying light conditions. Set as desired and press space bar to continue. I. The test switch controls the selection of the four HUD test patterns. On selects the first test pattern. Step advances to the next test pattern. Off returns the HUD to normal symbology. Unfortunately, this feature is not yet simulated on DCS. Press space bar to continue. 7. Set C and I knob to UFC. Normally, the communications and IFF equipment are controlled from the upfront controls, the ICP, integrated control panel, and the DED, data entry display. 
In case of failure of the UFC, the UHF and IFF panels on the left console can be activated by placing the C and I knob on the backup position. As the UFC is now fully powered, transfer control back to the UFC by setting the knob to the UFC position, do it now. 8. MFL, Maintenance Fault List, Clear. Unfortunately, this aspect is not yet modeled on DCS. On the real F16 the procedure for this step would be A. Left MFD, select test format on MFD. The MFL is displayed in the center of the test page. B. MFD, depress OSB3, clear. This clears the MFL and assures that faults encountered are recorded against the current mission. Press, spacebar, to continue. 10. SEC, check. The engine control system, has two pilot selectable modes of operation, primary, PRI, and secondary, SEC. The engine can automatically transfer to SEC when ADEC, digital engine control, failure occurs. It can manually be transferred to SEC by placing the engine control switch to SEC. Transfer is indicated by the illumination of the SEC caution light, RPM may also initially decrease, up to 10% RPM and then recover to a level slightly below that for PRI. When operating in SCC, the nozzle is closed. Movement of the throttle to max afterburner is permitted, however, the AB is inhibited. Maximum available thrust in SEC is attained at mil, military power. The thrust level at mil during SEC operation is 70 to 95 percent percent of that available during PRI operation at the same throttle position. Idle thrust in SEC is higher than idle thrust in PRI because the exhaust nozzle is closed. VSV, variable stator vanes, reset is not active in SEC. To begin the test, raise the red guard of the engine control switch. A. Place the engine control switch, on its SEC position. SEC caution light illuminates. RPM may drop up to 10% from PRI value before stabilizing. Stabilized SEC idle RPM may be up to 5% low. B. Throttle, snap to mill and then snap to idle when RPM reaches 85%. Check for normal indications and smooth operation. Be sure to have requested wheel chocks, to hold the plane in place. C. To end the test. Set the engine control switch to PRI and close its cover. SEC caution light, off. Nozzle position, greater than 94%. 11. Flight controls, cycle. To assist in warming the hydraulic fluid and removing air from the hydraulic system, maximum stick and rudder pedal inputs should be made prior to running FLCS bit. Press, space bar, to con- 12. FLCS bit, initiate and monitor. Position bit switch to bit. The run light on FLCP illuminates, at successful completion of bit, after approximately 45 seconds, the run light goes off, the bit switch returns to off, and the fail light and FLCS warning light remain off. A bit pass message should appear on the FLCS, MFD page, but it is currently not simulated on DCS. Press, 13. Set ECM panel, as required. Unfortunately, the ECM system is not yet implemented. Press, space bar, to 14. Speed brake switch. Cycle. Open the speed brakes with the hodas or using the keys left shift plus B to extend, held until fully open, and left control plus B to retract. Check the operation using the indicator on the left auxiliary console. Press, space bar, to continue. 15. Wheels down lights. Confirm 3 green. Check that the landing gear status lights are 3 green, on the left auxiliary console. 16. Standby attitude indicator, SAI. Set. Uncage and adjust using the mouse wheel. Press, space bar, to continue. 17. Fuel quantity select knob. Check. The aircraft has seven internal fuel tanks located in the fuselage and wings. There are provisions for carrying three external tanks on the wings and on the centerline station. On the fuel meter, the AL pointer corresponds to the F plus left tanks, while the FR pointer corresponds to the front plus right tanks. A. Hold the knob on the test position, with a left click and hold. The FR and AL pointers indicate 2000, plus minus 100, pounds and totalizer indicates 6000, plus minus 100, 
pounds. Forward and aft fuel low caution lights illuminate. B. Release the knob onto the norm position. The AL pointer indicates approximately 2,675 to 2,810 pounds. FR pointer indicates approximately 3,100 to 3,250 pounds. C. Place the knob onto the reservoir position. Each reservoir indicates approximately 460 to 480 pounds. D. Place the knob onto the internal wing position. Each wing indicates approximately 525 to 550 pounds. E. Place the knob onto the external wing position. Each external wing tank indicates approximately 2,300 to 2,420 pounds. 370 gallon fuel tank for 3,750 to 3,925 pounds. 600 gallon tank for full tanks. Currently, we don't have any external wing tanks, so it displays zero. F. Place the knob onto the external center position. FR pointer indicates approximately 1,800 to 1,890 pounds. For full tank, AL pointer drops to zero. The sum of the individual fuel tanks and the totalizer should agree within plus minus 100 pounds with only internal fuel or plus minus 300 pounds with external fuel. Leave the fuel quantity select knob as desired and press spacebar 18. Check EPU fuel quantity 95 to 102 percent. The EPU emergency power unit uses hydrazine to operate. The EPU fuel quantity indicator located on the right auxiliary console is graduated 0 to 100 and indicates the percent of hydrazine remaining. 19. Avionics program is required and verify. The next items will be taught in detail on future training lessons. They include things like SMS setup, communications, navigation steer points, profile data, MFD master mode data. Press spacebar to continue. However, there are two simpler items that we will cover here as examples. A. Set bingo fuel level. This option allows the pilot to enter a bingo fuel value via the upfront controls. The bingo fuel warning is enunciated when either the lesser of internal fuselage fuel weight or total fuel weight decreases below this value. The warning consists of the letters fuel which flash in the center area of the HUD, the letters fuel displayed in the lower left corner of the HUD, and a voice message in the pilot's headset. Bingo, bingo. On the ICP click on list. Next, on the ICP, select 2, bingo. The DED shows last entered bingo value and total fuel on board. Use the numeric keypad to enter a new bingo value, say 2500, and then click enter. Finally, click on the RTN position of the data control switch, DCS, to return the display to its main page, the CNI page. B. Set up the RWR and the CMDS. The ALR66, radar warning receiver, RWR, is a passive system which detects and identifies radio frequency threat signals. Power it up by clicking the power button on the threat warning auxiliary panel. Activate the CMDS, countermeasures dispensing system, by turning its mode knob to man. Turn on the dispense switches for chaff and flares. 20. Multifunction displays, set as desired. Press spacebar to continue. 21. VHF UHF radio, as desired. We will use the UFC to set the UHF radio to the ATC of our current airbase, MICOP. The frequency is 254.0 MHz, which corresponds to the preset 5 of this radio. Select COM1 on the ICP. Currently, the radio is set to a manual frequency. 305 megahertz to select preset 5 click on the digit 5 if you enter one or two digits the system assumes that it is a preset number if you enter three or more digits it assumes that it is a manual frequency in mhz to enter the value click on enter 22 dbu digital backup unit check the dbu provides a software backup in the event of software problems in the primary program of the flcs flight control system. The DBU is a reduced set of control laws which automatically engages when software problems in the FLCC force it into a failed state. During DBU operation, autopilot, terrain following, and stick steering are inoperative. Gun compensation is not provided. There is no roll rate input to the AO limiter. 
Maximum roll rate command is a constant 167 degrees per second. Stores config switch is inoperative. Stick commands are essentially CAT 3 limited. Rudder pedal commands are essentially CAT 1 limited. Pitch trim centering at wheel spin up is inoperative. Leading edge flaps scheduling is simplified and optimized for a cruise condition at approximately 20,000 feet MSL. A. Set digital backup switch to backup. Verify. B. Operate controls. All surfaces should respond normally. C. Digital backup switch to off. Verify that DBU on warning light goes off. Twenty three trim check. We will now check correct operation of the trim controls. A set the trim AP disc switch to disc with a left click. Stick trim button activate and roll and pitch. No control surface motion should occur on the trim panel. No trim wheel or indicator motion should occur. Press space bar to continue. B set trim AP disc switch to norm with a right click. Stick trim button, check in center. Control surface motion. Trim wheel and indicator motion should occur. Press space bar to continue. Stick trim button, check in center. Control surface motion. Trim wheel and indicator motion should occur. Press space bar to continue. 25. MPO, check. The manual pitch override, MPO, switch. Located on the left console, has two positions, normal and override, and is spring-loaded to the norm position. This switch is used during a deep stall condition to enable manual control of the horizontal tails. Positioning and holding the switch to OVRD, overrides the negative G limiter. If AOA exceeds 35 degrees, the OVRD position overrides the AOA, G limiter and allows pitch commands. On DCS, to be able to perform this test, it is best to bind a key to the switch so that we can hold it while we watch the horizontal tail. Please, hit escape and on the menu select adjust controls, look for the action manual pitch override switch and assign left shift plus Q to it. See figure on the briefing. Press space. Spar. Once you have this key binded, to check the MPO operation, follow this procedure. Stick, full forward and hold, note horizontal tail deflection. In the real F-16 the ground crew would assist, in DCS you can press F2 to see the tail from outside. MPO switch, set to override and hold, using the key left shift, confirm that horizontal tail trailing it, confirm that the horizontal tail returns to its original position. Press F1 to return to cockpit view. Press space bar to continue. Twenty seven air refueling system, if required, check air refuel switch set to open with a right click. Ready light on, disc light should be off. If both the ready and disc lights are on, then one or more relays are failed. This condition must be corrected prior to air refuel. Air refuel switch, close. Ready light off, 28. Brakes, check both channels, then return to channel 1. On the rear F16, this check is done with help from the ground crew. On DCS we will use the controls overlay instead. Check the brakes as follows. A. Set the brake switch to channel 2, with a left click. One brake pedal, depress. Confirm, ground crew slash overlay, brake activates. Opposite brake pedal, depress. Confirm, initial brake does not activate. 
Repeat above steps for opposite brake. B. Set the brake switch to channel 1, with a right click. One brake pedal, depress. Confirm, ground crew slash overlay, brake activates. Opposite brake pedal, depress. Confirm, initial brake does not activate. Repeat above steps for opposite brake. Press, space 29. Anti-ice, check. Perform the following. Ensure that the engine is stabilized at idle RPM. Anti-ice switch, set to off with a left click, then on for 45 seconds. As the pilot fault lists, PFL, are not yet simulated, the following part of the procedure will not be needed, we will state it just for reference. If the NG, AI, fail PFL occurs. Stabilize engine at 80% RPM. Anti-ice switch to off for 15 seconds, then note EFTIT. Anti-ice switch to on while monitoring EFTIT. If EFTIT fails to increase a minimum of 10 degrees Celsius within 30 seconds, abort the aircraft if flight may encounter areas of known or suspected icing conditions. Anti-ice switch, leave it on auto or on. 30. EPU check. EPU gen and EPU, PMG lights, confirm off. EPU switch, raise its cover and set to off with a left click. At this point, on the rear left 16 you would have the ground crew remove the EPU ground safety pins. Next, set the EPU switch back to norm with a right click, and 35. Avionic bits, as desired. Press, space bar, to 36. Seat, adjust to have eye level with the HUD. Press, space bar, to continue. Thirty seven. A bogs check at least two minutes after engine start. A bogs bit switch set to bit with a right click and hold while the bit runs. Verify that oxy low warning light illuminates for 10 seconds, then goes off. Pressure check 25 to 40 pounds per square inch. Mode lever PBG on as required. Press space bar to continue. 